Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Really cool to see you all here. Also, Daos, this is already there. Some other folks uh, who I know from the launchpad. So, a little bit about myself. So, yes, I'm a founding member of Dao Swiss, also founder of FTW Dao. Uh, before being in blockchain, I was a traditional banker working for UBS and Deutsche Bank, and since four years, I'm basically have a new life. And today, I want to introduce you to the Dao Radar Switzerland, which is an ecosystem report focusing on Dao, Dao solely. Not working. Sorry for that. But anyway, I can. Um, the DAO Radar Switzerland. So basically, the idea was born actually last year during Ethereum Zurich. Because there, um, there was a workshop about DAOs, also um, um, prepared by DAO Swiss. And after the workshop, there were a lot of questions about DAOs. And the questions were always the same. So, do I need a legal wrapper? Where should I go? Who is a tax advisor who could help me with that? Who is a legal advisor on that? Which tax stack should I use? Which tools do I need? Do I need a Telegram channel, a Discord channel? and a Discord server. And based on that, we thought it would maybe make sense to create a report about the DAOs here in Switzerland. And that's the DAO Radar Switzerland. The idea is really looking into DAOs which have a strong connection to Switzerland, and also then looking at the entire ecosystem holistically, um, looking at service providers, layer two blockchains, and also communities which are here active in Switzerland. And I hope with that, the technical issues are solved quickly. And We are very sorry. We have a slight technical hiccup. Now it should work. Good. So for the presentation, for the next 10 to 12 minutes, I want to give you a short recap. What is a DAO? Because so many people are talking about DAOs, and then there is no consistent definition of that. Um, I want to go into the DAO ecosystem here in Switzerland, and then I want to give you a short sneak peek into our report, which is going to be published in May or June of this year. And then specifically, I want to go into the insights which we found in legal and taxation, tech and tooling, the challenges, and also the trends. So I gave already the introduction about DAO Radar Switzerland. Um, the idea is that it will be a publication with around 20 to 30 pages going into the ecosystem here in Switzerland. And we look at different aspects of the ecosystem, legal taxation, all the other things, what I mentioned there before. What is really important, it's an ecosystem report. So we also have ecosystem partners, CV Labs, ZHAW, and also DAO Swiss are driving that forward. So, but first, what is a DAO? Um, in the report, we conducted around 40 interviews with DAO operators, but also like um, service providers. And our first question was always, what is a DAO? And based on these 40 interviews, we got around 60 or 70 different definitions because everybody has like multiple definitions. For me, that's like just like some sample definitions or the responses. For me, the most favorite one is like a DAO is a community or a group with a shared bank account, which work towards a joint vision or mission. And I think the big takeaway from all of these different quotes and also the definition, there is you know, actually a common understanding of a DAO, what a DAO is. If you take an academic definition of a DAO, um, that it has to be decentralized, it has to be autonomous. If you look into aspects what people say, it has to have on-chain voting, then probably there's almost no real DAO. So I think what we have here in the ecosystem is there are DAOs, which call themselves DAOs, and they are different, very, uh, on different levels of, of the definition. And that's just like a, a short um, insight on that. So maybe that's then bringing us to the ecosystem here in Switzerland. So there, on the right side, you see how we see the ecosystem here in Switzerland. At the core, there are these DAOs. Of course, DAOs are global, but for us, really the, the starting point was to look at DAOs which have a strong connection to Switzerland. Could be they have a legal wrapper here, like a foundation or association, or the team, like the, they have a strong presence here in Switzerland. Um, beyond these DAOs, we also extended our view and looked at other aspects of the ecosystem, at service providers, communities, um, universities, and layer two and layer, uh, layer one and layer two blockchains, and that's for us actually the ecosystem. What makes Switzerland really unique for other countries in the world when it comes to DAOs is um, it has this legal clarity because you have two proven legal wrappers here, so a foundation and association. And if you are of the opinion that a DAO needs a legal wrapper, then there are only like a small hand of 
countries where you could incorporate a DAO. So typically, when you think about jurisdictions to incorporate a DAO, you think about Marshall Islands, Cayman Islands, BVI, and Switzerland. And what makes Switzerland really different is that you have this amazing ecosystem here. You have legal and tax advisors who are specialized into DAOs. You have communities which are focusing on DAOs, also other aspects. You have universities which are doing research here. So you have this strong ecosystem, and that makes Switzerland really unique. When we conducted these interviews, as I said before, we looked at different dimensions of the DAO ecosystem. And from there, we tried to look into challenges what DAOs face right now. And when we look at the legal and taxation aspects, there's like the biggest, I think the biggest question in the DAO space is, does a DAO actually need a legal wrapper? And I think there you could say it's split 50-50. 50% of the people say, no, a DAO doesn't need a legal wrapper because it's an internet native organization. It doesn't need. And others say, yeah, it definitely needs a legal wrapper. And our opinion was, or also like the, the conclusion of that is, if a DAO doesn't have a legal wrapper, it makes it really difficult to interface with the rest of the world. It's extremely difficult to get a bank account, for example, to enter into contractual relationships. So DAOs really struggle if they don't have a legal wrapper. Um, if they don't have a legal wrapper, it also makes it difficult for the contributors because suddenly you have liability for all the contributors and members of the DAO. So a legal wrapper is really like an important piece of the entire puzzle. When you look at taxation, um, taxation is also like a big, big problem for DAOs. Um, as soon as you have on-chain voting, as soon as you have a token, um, it becomes really messy from a taxation point of view, so you really have to keep um, track of that and you have to focus on that. One challenge, what we surfaced in these interviews when it comes to DAOs is, right now there is no good software actually to track these transactions, so there's a, ma a lot of manual work involved if you have a DAO which has a token, so that's also like a concern what these different DAOs have. Um, if we go to tech and tooling, um, the first question what founders always ask, or people who want to start a DAO, in which blockchain ecosystem should I start it? Um, most um, DAOs which we observed, they are somewhere in the Ethereum ecosystem, of course, there are others in Solana, in Polkadot, but the majority of all the DAOs, what we interviewed, and also what you see in DeepDAO, they are in Ethereum. But that's like the first question DAO founders always ask, which blockchain should I build my DAO, uh, my DAO upon? Um, when you look at the tooling stack, um, it's really interesting that you see some commonalities across all the DAOs. So almost every DAO we talk to and also like we know they have a Telegram channel, they have a Discord server, they have a Twitter account, which you could say that's required for community building and marketing. Um, most of them often use Notion as a vehicle to do knowledge management, to drive project forward, but then you have other other tools which are not so often used. For example, some DAOs use DWORK to do project management, um, also to hand out bounties. So that's really interesting. So the takeaway from our work in the DAO radar is that there is no common tech stack or tooling stack when it comes to DAOs because there's like still a lot of tools evolving and there's not a clear opinion from the different DAOs we talk to which, which tools you normally should use as a DAO. Um, when I would go to the challenges, there are different kind of challenges what these DAOs face. Um, some of them are already touched base, but um, what, because a DAO is a community ultimately, and most DAOs start from scratch, it's a huge challenge for these DAO operators and founders. How do I build a community? How do I engage um, this community? Also, the, the, the longer this DAO exists, how can you incentivize contributors to continuously contribute to the DAO? And then also, how do you coordinate? How can you help the people to coordinate themselves to work towards a common goal, for example? When it comes to finances, it's also a big challenge for these DAO founders and DAO operators. How can they keep the operations sustainable in terms of finances? Um, some DAOs have a token, for example, which they sold and created a treasury with that, but how can they generate revenues? And that comes back to the discussion of a DAO needs a business model, in order to generate revenue sustainably and then also like to set up itself to sustainably operate. So that's a big challenge. The legal and compliance topics are already touched base um, a little bit. And 
the tech and tooling I already mentioned also before. It's, it's really like the challenge around um, which blockchain should I um, um, build my DAO upon and which tools should I use in order to stay abreast and also like um, stay up to date. Um, when we look at the trends and we ask, ask all of our interview partners also what, what kind of trends do you see in the DAO space right now? And there are like five different themes what we saw. One topic which is really like um, came often up was the topic of forking with communities, for example, splitting because there was like a uh, different um, um, understanding of where the DAO should evolve. Um, sub DAOs or guilds, for example, that's a really pressing topic for a lot of DAOs, which goes back then, how can you coordinate and orchestrate work? Um, does it really make sense that, that the entire community in the DAO is deciding upon everything or is it possible to delegate? Um, for example, tasks and activities and decisions to a smaller subgroup. Um, is that subgroup then a guild or should it be a sub-DAO? And that's an entire topic which is evolving. Um, one interesting aspect, what we also saw, which is really like um, um, going up a lot is when it comes to DAOs is decentralized science. So we saw that there are more and more DAOs focusing on, focusing on decentralized science where communities are brought together and basically focusing on doing research for for example, for big pharmaceutical companies in a decentralized way, or also like other research. So that's also like a, um, uh, a trend what we see here. And when it comes to governance, it's also again <clears throat> the, the system how DAOs set up their governance is not yet really established. There are different approaches from different DAOs, how they do it. Um, I think all the DAOs, what they share when it comes to governance is that there are a lot of challenges right now. You have a lot of voter fatigue if you look at DAOs and their voting. Um, what you often see is that only like a small group of the entire DAO is voting upon all the decisions. So that's, um, I think, a pressing issue where a lot of people in the DAO space are focusing their efforts on. How can we set up a governance which is also engaging the people sufficiently so that we can really materialize this democratic approach about decisions? And lastly, now with the current bull run, again, it's a topic, treasury management. How can a DAO manage the treasury effectively and efficiently? How can they set it up also that it's transparent? Some DAOs, what you see, for example, um, out there, they have processes when it comes to treasury management, which, is, which are cumbersome, which are not really transparent. So treasury is always also a topic because as soon as you have people, for example, stepping up, uh, to become a, a, a member of a multisig, these people take over responsibility and also liability, you could argue. So there needs to be established processes and policies to focus on, and that was also like what we got from our interviews. Just to conclude that and sum this up, um, the DAO radar report will be published in May or June. We really tried to create a DAO ecosystem report looking into DAOs, the entire ecosystem here, get, bringing together trends and challenges. And also then out of that, we want to create like hands-on action plans for founders who want to start a DAO. And that's, for example, one outcome also of the DAO report was the DAO launchpad. So we had set up a launchpad for people who wanted to start a DAO and try to give them some advice on how to set up a DAO, think about topics like legal, tokenomics, operations, because we really wanted to hand over our knowledge, what we generated in this DAO report, also to founders to make it more easy. So this report should be really like an actionable report which people can use. Um, beyond that, DAO Swiss, what we do is we offer or we organize conferences. So every year we host the DAO Symposium, which is a big conference here in Switzerland focusing on DAOs. Um, we have monthly meetups, so um, the next meetup is in the beginning of May, focusing on the legal aspects. It's in cooperation with MME, and we also have working groups. So if you want to join us as a member, we have working groups on legal and taxation, operations, governance, and tech and tooling. So we are here, the organization or the association which is really focusing on DAOs and to drive forward, because our vision ultimately is to make Switzerland the go-to place for DAOs globally. And with that, I would open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Ben. Uh, are there any questions in the audience? Sorry, I missed the beginning of this. I really wanted to be here. But have you ever looked into associations connected with DAOs? I'm creating an association in Switzerland right now and was advised not to do the DAO because it was you know, sort of the same thing 
except for not decentralized. I'm, I'm doing an e-commerce site, so that's the difficulty in the legals. So I wasn't sure if you had looked into that at all. In which again, can you, into association as a legal wrapper? Use it, it's going to be a registered Swiss association. Yeah. So, so basically what we saw from our interviews is that there are two legal entity or wrappers which are currently used. One is a foundation and the other one is an association. What we saw is that the DAOs, which are a little bit older, they use the foundation setup because this was the initial idea. And the newer products, they're using an association as a legal wrapper. Um, there were different opinions on the benefits and the disadvantages of that. What I personally think is that a, funda a foundation makes sense if you have a long-term vision and project and you want to basically set up guardrails to achieve that. If your project can do that, then maybe a foundation is better. It's a little bit more expensive and more rigid. If you need more flexibility and also like lower cost, then an association is a better way. Also, when we talk to different lawyers here in Switzerland, um, we always ask this question, do you actually see a need for a new legal entity? Because, for example, in, in Colorado, I think, they set up this digital cooperative some month ago, and the, the people we talk to, they are not yet sure. I think that's a little bit more of exploitative work, which is required, whether here in Switzerland you need a new legal entity. But for now, I think most of the projects, they are really happy with the association um, setup, what they have. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Really awesome talk. Like, yeah. So you know, when when I got into DAOs, which was on when I got into DAOs in 2021, it felt a little bit like everybody wanted to start a DAO for every problem in the world, and I think I was one of these people. Um, since then, I think my opinion changed a lot. So that goes back to the question around the business model. So when you're a founder or a person who wants to start a DAO, I think you have to think, is the problem I want to solve better solved with a traditional organization, like a startup, or a DAO? And for me personally, which is a little bit the guideline, is if you think about your problem and you think 10 people spending 10 hours is doing the job instead of like 100 people doing one hour, then maybe a traditional setup is better. So as soon as you can, as you, as you are convinced that your problem can be solved better by a swarm of people contributing some time, then a DAO might, might make sense. But also, like, as a DAO founder, I have to say um, DAOs are really tricky because on the one side, you want to build a product often, and you have to build a community, which is also a product in some way. So and the question is, like, do you really want to make your life really hard in building a product and a community because a community is based on humans? So um, I would say, not that it's scientifically proven, but I would say only 10% of the problems of business models in the world can be better served by a DAO than a, um, a traditional organization. But that's my, my opinion. I think there are different opinions all around. Does it, does it go in the right direction? Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you uh, to the audience. Uh, any last questions? We still have a few minutes, so if there are any any pressing questions or not so pressing. Yeah, just one quick question, because I also worked with a lot of DAOs, and a lot of the DAOs are not, in my opinion, real DAOs, because they're always controlled by a few token holders. So did you do any researches that actually showed that any DAO out there is really decentralized in the sense of not being unwrapped or stateless, but in the sense of actually having a really big community with a very varied token holder voting? Mm. So I didn't do the academic research on that, but my feeling would be there's maybe one or two from the 10,000 DAOs which you see on da uh, Deep DAO. So from our sample size, I would say there's not one DAO which you could consider close to this aspirational definition of a DAO. And even if you look at deep DAO with the 10,000 DAOs, I think there are not many. Um, it's also like due to the, um, the nature how DAOs evolve. So often or most of the time you have a core team which is driving the community forward and that try to decentralize. But most of the DAOs, they get stuck at a certain point in time. They are no longer decentralizing it further and then it stops. And I personally, for example, a really cool example of a different approach is Bankless DAO which was in some way conceived by token airdrop for subscribers. And that was maybe like more true to a DAO, how a DAO should 
look like. But yeah, from our research, I would say of the DAOs here in Switzerland, um, there's a lot of work to do. But I think it's also this trial and error because there are all these common challenges and problems when it comes to governance, when it comes to tech and tooling. Um, I think there needs to be more groundwork to solve these issues in order to basically focus on this problem, how can you set up this perfect DAO? Thank you so much, Ben. I think we have one last question. Uh, thank you, Ben, for, for the presentation uh, and also for the DAO launchpad, by the way. Um, yeah, my question is, uh, in your research, uh, uh, what's the percentage of uh, DAOs um, using one token for governance and uh, tokenomics? And uh, what's the percentage wa was multi-tokens to, to separate? Uh, so in the DAO report specifically, we didn't look at that. Okay. Um, okay. So again, coming back to the previous question, um, many DAOs also right now, they don't have a token, for example, um, when you look at these. Um, because they want to launch it in the future, they don't want to launch it, so that goes back to the question, what do you define as a DAO? Um, what you are talking about is, I think, a highly sophisticated DAO model, and you wouldn't find so many DAOs who have that presently. Thank you very much.